Hi, welcome to the Mostly Mike Show. Today I'm going to build a wall, specifically a gabion wall. I'll explain how I constructed the gabion baskets and show you some of the tools and supplies used to build gabion walls. But first let me explain my situation. We're going to play a little game of pretend. So, let's pretend that my yard is a country. Like a, like an awesome country. A country that was previously made great again. And along this great country's border is a small river that we'll call, um... Let's call it the Rio Brandon. Well, every now and then, the Rio Brandon River rises above its banks. And when this happens, unwelcomed water sneaks onto my property. Which is why I decided that I must build a wall right away to protect my great country. Er, property. Anyway, let's get started. Let me declare that this is not a tutorial as much as just showing you how I did this. It's all part of a top secret Mostly Mike Show headquarters renovation, as well as part of a future backyard trail build. So to start off, let me tell you WT a Gabion wall is. There seems to be various opinions where these mysterious walls originated. I used to think that they were invented in Gabia, of course, by the Gabians. But no such country, no such people. Some think that Gabian walls were first used in ancient Egypt along the River Nile. And Gabian is an Egyptian word meaning a cage holding a shit ton of rocks together. Which sounds close enough for me. The Gabian baskets are going to be constructed of these goat panels which I purchased from a farm supply store for about 50 bucks a piece. They are crafted of galvanized 4 gauge wire with 4 inch by 4 inch holes and the total dimensions of the panels are 4 foot by 16 foot. When planning the wall dimensions, the rule of thumb that I am going with is the thickness of this wall is going to be one half to two thirds of its height. I'm going to bend this rule slightly at the deep end, but the wall is only one course high, so we should be okay. Because of the terrain features, the wall tapers down in height as it goes back. After taking all of our measurements for panel dimensions, we're ready to cut some panels. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Consider which layouts produce the least amount of waste. There's many different methods for cutting these goat panels, including bolt cutters, sawzalls, and angle grinders. So I'm going to cut these with a meta bow angle grinder, and we're using the ultra thin uh, wafer wheel. Use PPE. After cutting the panels to the dimensions needed to build the cage, we'll need to lay them out on the ground for assembly. The cages need to be tied together with 12 and a half gauge wire, but this is very hard to do while the panels are laying on the ground. So I'm temporarily holding them together with stainless steel hog rings. And now I'll explain more than you ever wanted to know about hog rings and the tools to install them. So we got these hog rings. I bought these from Hamilton Marine. I'll put the link below. Uh, I had one heck of a time finding these. I looked all over Amazon, I looked all over eBay, I looked in some local hardware stores. Now these things are one inch. They're not real heavy, but cumulatively I think they're going to be plenty strong. They're hog ring pliers. Uh, there's two different kinds. Um, one of them's actually made in USA. The other one, I try to buy American when I can, but these ones aren't. As you can see, these ones spring open, and these ones spring closed. There's a reason for that. And what I'm gonna try to do when I'm building it, like say you're holding something in place and you want these to be ready to go, so you're not fumbling around trying to get the, the ring in there. These ones actually, let me see if I can demonstrate. They kind of hold it in place anyhow, the, the American made ones. And these may end up being the ones that I use all the time, but these other ones, they work the same exact way. When you put the ring in, but there's a lot more spring tension against it. We'll see which ones work better. They were relatively inexpensive. I think both of these were around the $15 range, but I'll include links below for those. These all came from Hamilton Marine. The original plan was to use these hog rings exclusively, but they are just made of 14 gauge wire. 
sort of made me lose faith in their integrity, you know, in the structural sense of the term. So I decided to tie them with 12 and a half gauge galvanized wire. I bought over 1300 of these hog rings, so I can afford to put lots of these on. I'll go along the perimeter of the base panel first, and then the panels will hinge to form a rectangular cage. I'll then invert this cage to ease the tying process. The rule of thumb on tying these together is that the colder it is outside while you're tying these, the more your thumbs are going to ache. I'm not making this up. Now we're going to level it in place and fill it with rubble. Here's another thing to consider. Make sure that you are certain that the cage is where it belongs before you put a million tons of stone in and then say, well, maybe it would be better if we moved it back three inches. Speak now or forever. I had a huge pile of old bricks as well as old concrete slabs that I had removed for a fresh pour that I'm going to be recycling to fill this wall. I used a $150 demolition hammer which I made a review for recently. I'll include the video links above and in the description below. It did a fantastic job. The recycled concrete rubber, rubble, rubble, filled this wall a lot more than expected, which is a good thing. This was also a great place to get rid of other things lying around such as old brake rotors, which add to the character of the wall. After I used up most of the resources that I could find around the yard, I had to buy number 4 limestone, which we know by the name of Rip Wrap. This is sold locally by the ton. It is actually more pleasing to the eye for finishing the last foot or so of the wall's height, which will stick out of the grass after I backfill and landscape in the spring. After about every foot of stone, I tied a piece of 12 and a half wire from the front to the back to keep the sides of the wall from bulging out from the weight of the filler material. I installed these about every two feet or six squares. If you're planning on building a gabion wall of your very own, keep in mind that this type of retaining wall is extremely labor intensive. This wall took over a month to construct working by myself. Because this was late fall, it got dark around 5 p.m., so much of this project was filmed working in the dark or in the cold. I'll call it the ultimate test of intestinal fortitude. Who writes these scripts? As the project started to take shape, it was very rewarding to see the daily progress. As the wall got longer and longer, it made my yard feel safer and safer. Keeping the unwanted waters from the Rio Brandon out, in turn making my yard a safer, perhaps greater place to live and of course make videos once again. How about clicking the thumbs up for that one? Have any of you ever built a Gabian wall? If so, I would love to hear about your Gabian wall building stories and adventures. Please feel free to share them in the comments below or on the Mostly Mike Show Facebook page. I can't wait to hear about them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.